¿Me avisan, por favor, si la ven? Se ve y perfectamente. Can you see my screen? Yes, thank you. Macarena, Carlos, thank you for the introduction. And before starting, I would like to say two things. I'd like to greet each one of you who is following us remotely. I hope you are all safe at home. And secondly, I would like to say thank you very much to LACNA's committee for once again giving me the opportunity to share with the LACNIC and LAC communities what we do at Telegeography. Today's presentation, as Macarena said, goes hand in hand with what is happening right now. Over the next 20 minutes, I will be speaking about the impact the pandemic has had in telecom on telecommunications networks. I will be covering four different topics. The first one is the impact on COVID-19 on the submarine cable industry. Second, the impact of the pandemic on network operations. Thirdly, the impact on international connectivity. And fourth, I will be speaking about whether this has had an impact on wholesale pricing. 2020 will, without doubt, a year we will all remember, not only because of the pandemic, but also for other reasons. The largest lesson that the pandemic has given the telecommunications industry, at least, is that we strongly defend on both terrestrial and submarine connectivity. If it were not for the internet, Activity, we couldn't work from home, we couldn't do homeschooling, and we couldn't connect with our doctors, and we couldn't continue with our normal life. And this has assisted the industry in order to continue getting prepared for events such as these. But there are other events that occurred in 2020 and that have an impact on the region. The first is that LACNA is celebrating its 10th anniversary. And the second fact is that in August this year, LACNIC announced that it assigned the last IP4 block they had available. I wanted to announce these two events because they really have affected our region. Now, let us start. First of all, I would like to mention COVID-19 initial impact on the industry. When the outbreak of a pandemic began in March, there was an abrupt increase in network traffic. So what did operators do? First of all, they had to manage their traffic levels. We are aware that companies such as Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, and many others had to reduce the speed in the media applications in some regions in order to help mitigate the network congestion. Secondly, many operators had, have stated that they had to accelerate their plans to respond to the capacity upgrades to stay ahead of demand. This means that when an operator is getting ready for the following year and decides what capacity they will need for the following year, this is an upgrade that is done organically. It's not done overnight. Now, back in March, many of these operators had to complete all their upgrades in the networks back in March. And finally, is a an issue that has to do with network maintenance and repairs. This is always that has always taken place. This is something that all technicians have done and are still doing in the sense of maintaining the global networks running, whether inside the data centers or in the field or on board cable repair ships. The impact of the pandemic and the subsea cable market 
this has to do with what Rogelio presented a while ago. Let me mention three points that were impacted by this. First of all, it was affected in the in terms of manufacturing. We're aware that the pandemic has led to a couple of slowdowns in the subsea global supply chain. For example, we are aware that one of the suppliers, one of the manufacturers of fiber optics, had to close two of the factories in early March. And then these were reopened in May. This closure did not strongly affect the projects that were in the pipeline, but it did have a couple of delays. The second point is survey and deployment. And like Rogelio explained a while ago, when a project is presented, there are vessels that go around the world and do these surveys. So when the pandemic started, governments decided to close international borders. So many of these vessels could not reach the international waters of these countries. So this was really a challenge that affected the surveying and cable laying and then maintenance. This has never been an easy task, namely repairing these subsea cables. This has to do with permitting, like Roger said a while ago, we're going to lay a cable and this is in the border of a country, you have to ask for permission in order to access that coast. If it already was quite a tedious procedure, the restrictions imposed as a result of the pandemic by some governments made things even more difficult. Another point is that that has to do with the impact on the networks. The geography in May and June updated the Global Internet Report, asked the data providers on the deployment capacity in their IP networks and on the traffic levels. But in addition to the questions that we all usually ask, we added five further questions that have to do with the measures taken by these operators in view of the pandemic. These are the five questions. One, if they had to accelerate domestic capacity upgrades, whether they had to accelerate international capacity upgrades, whether they had to increase their IP transit purchase, if they had to increase their peering capacity, and if they had to increase their caching capacity. So from all the answers that, was, that we received, all participants answered at least yes to one of the questions. 70% of these participants, of the respondents said they had to accelerate their domestic capacity upgrades. 70% of the respondents also, more than 70% said that they had to speed up their peering capacity. Now, we were curious to see if there was a difference in the measures taken by global operators and regional operators. And the result is what I'm going to show you in the next slide. The same questions were divided into two groups, global operators and regional operators. I will focus on question number three, namely if they had to increase their IP transit purchases. We see that 58% of the regional operators responded that they did, but none of the global backbone operators answered yes to this question. Now, this should not surprise us because the majority, if not all of the operators, of the global operators are type tier one or tier the operators and 
the majority of the networks was working transit free. Regarding the impact of the pandemic on international connectivity, I would like to refer to two points, uh, globally and in the case of Latin America. This slide is, uh, this, uh, this graph is something I show every year. This shows the deployed capacity in terms of internet bandwidth internationally over the past five years. In mid-2020, 618 TPSs were deployed. This is an annual growth of 35%. We believe that this increase was partly driven by the pandemic. However, we were curious to see what share the growth of SERP this year could have been caused by the impact of COVID-19. One of the ways of estimating this was comparing the values we forecasted prior to the pandemic with the values we observed this year. So this table shows the growth between 2019 and 2020 in the regions we studied in this report, as well as the global number. The first column shows the forecasted growth prior to the pandemic, and in the next column, the observed growth. Now, let us focus on the last line, the global impact. 26% was the forecasted growth, but in fact, the observed growth was 35%. So this difference leads us to think that operators deployed about 8% additional capacity compared to what they had expected. And we estimate that this was a response to the abrupt increase in traffic resulting from the pandemic. Now, if we think that this is a different, uh, this is an extraordinary year, but under normal conditions, under normal circumstances, the capacity, the, the growth of bandwidth um, mimics or reflects or is almost the same as the traffic growth of the internet. Here, I'm showing the peak traffic. However, this year, things were different. And what happened is that operators reported growth rates much higher than they expected in the peak traffic. In all the regions, traffic grew faster, both in term in, in also in capacity. And as a matter of fact, Latin America was the region that had the greatest difference from 32% to 51%. Now, let me tell you about connectivity in Latin America. Latin America is a very active region. Not only is it active with uh, submarine cables, but we have a lot of uh, uh, operators in the region. The, the bars show you the bandwidth in the region, the international, international internet bandwidth. In 2020, the region overall um, had 69 uh, tera bits. Uh, bits. Uh, here we see the difference in uh, the sub-region. South America r ranks first um, with, uh, it accounted for 72% of the region's total capacity. Uh, but Central America was the one that grew fastest with uh, at a 33% uh, rate. This sketch shows you the international connectivity. This was also, I, I, I show this quite frequently and I love it because this shows you in the map that the region of Latin America, that Latin America depends greatly on the United States uh, in terms of connectivity. Here we'll see 
the top route, the top uh, Latin American IP route, and things haven't changed too much uh, uh, as compared to previous years. In 2020, the top five international capacity routes in Latin America were all connected to the United States, that is, from the United uh, from Latin America. The first was Brazil USA, the second Mexico USA, third Chile USA, fourth Colombia USA, and fifth Argentina USA. Bet uh, connectivity between uh, the countries in Latin America and in inter-regional routes uh, six and seven are uh, from Argentina, Argentina, Chile, and Argentina, Brazil. Those are intra-regional. That's numbers. Uh, Argentina, Brazil is number seven. And as an anecdote, USA, Brazil had about uh, 20 TBPS, and it's the number one route in Latin America, and it's the second globally. And before I conclude, I'm going to show a slide that shows you pricing. I'm going to explain it briefly. The slides show the weight average of a uh, circuit um, of uh, 10 gig and shows the weight average per mega for a 10 gig e port. There are things that haven't changed much. The common denominator pre-pandemic and post-pandemic is that the price ratio is quite fast. Just to give you some numbers, in Latin America, the IP transit prices dropped by 21% between the first quarter this year and the first quarter last year. And the tra traffic had uh, fell by 20% between Q2 2020 and Q2 2019. Let me highlight a couple of things here. You see the inequality of prices between the markets and the regions. Number two is that the uh, pipe and cord uh, model is not as prevalent as it was in the past. I'm going to focus on the route Miami Sao Paulo because we are in Latin America. This route, Miami Sao Paulo, until last year, it was cheaper to buy a transit in Miami and to pay the cost of the circuit between Miami and Sao Paulo. That was last year in 2019. However, this year, it's cheaper to buy transit in Sao Paulo. The same can be observed in routes such as London, Johannesburg, and London, Dubai. And that is all. I don't know whether you have any questions. Hello, Anai, I'm Carlos again. We do have a question, but I'm going to give a minute to see whether there are more questions. In the meantime, I want to make a couple of comments. First of all, I wanted to thank Rogerio because we mentioned him this morning and I wanted to thank him for all the work he did for LACNOG as a member of the board of LACNOG. He gave one of the first steps uh, to uh, make our uh, organization more formal and he worked a lot and he promoted our links with LACNIC. And I remember that when Rogerio was in the board, he uh, was very active. So. Rogerio, uh, thank you. And let's see when you can take me again to that uh, beef uh, restaurant you took me the other day. I do know whether you know that this presentation is one of the presentations the best evaluate in all the LACNOG history of LACNOGs. In October, every year in October, we Look, we are eager to hear it. And and we wanted to see the slide that showed the prices. It's famous and it was there. It was there at the end. So Anai, I wanted to thank you for so many years of being with us and always bringing such excellent material. I see that there are two questions. Would you like me? No, let me read them and you answer them. 
Marcelo Salas asks in Spanish, the growth of traffic, uh, was it measured from January, September 2019 and 2020? Let me explain how we collect, gather uh, the data. We ask the operators to give us their traffic level up to April. So we compare April 2019 to April 2020 with sliding years, month. We have another question by Asael Fernandez, who says, what is the outlook for the following months until Q1 2021? Well, we've been asked that uh, many times in the last six months. I, I am unable to tell you exactly the trends that we see. What we can say is that the growth we saw this year was definitely something extraordinary. We don't think that this will be repeated. We, we hope this pandemic won't be repeated either. I think that by next year, I think that for 2021, the most likely thing is that we will see growth rates as uh, we had forecast before, and you can see that in the presentation table, that would be more in line to what uh, we had anticipated. Let me ask again uh, what Azael asked. Uh, so, Anaï, do you, do you think that there would be a regression of the growth rate? Uh, uh going back to normal from 2018 to 2019 before the pandemic yes we think that what happened in march and april this year 2020 was outstanding not normal and i had another question about that as a matter of fact what you said that the isps and the carriers had to speed up all the upgrades that they had planned for the year Sometimes the question that one thinks is whether you perceive a risk that the ISPs and the carriers may be may deplete their energies and their resources. Do you think that they still have a, uh, it can work? Well, I'm not an expert, but let me uh, quote a, a webinar by Lucknog. It's not that you are going to run out of supply. There's always going to be because you are ready for situations like this. Now, what may happen is that a small ISP may have no money left to buy or to pay its uh, provider. That's, that's a problem. Not so much uh, as to whether they are not going to have the capacity. It's mostly an economic problem. Thank you. We have another question. Juanjo asks, are there any documents uh, quoting prices, especially in South America? He's asking for references. Well, I'll send it to you through the mail. Juanjo, send her an email. Well, if you need to know prices in certain markets, I have no problems in sharing uh, what uh, we typically do publicly. We pay based on subscriptions, so I can't uh, give you all the information that is available for those who pay. So we have 55 seconds left. I don't know whether there will be more questions. Well, I have one. Do you see any uh, revolutions in uh, the horizon that will uh, change uh, things? Well, that's too technical for me. I won't be able to answer it. There's a question by Claire Craig, just on time. Claire would like to know. Do you have any information about the Caribbean at the trends you see they are, are they the same? Um, te voy a responder en español, uh, uh, Claire. Uh, la Claire, so, I'll answer in English, um, in Spanish. Well, the trends that we saw here are for the entire region, but it varies a lot 
in the subregion. So please send me an email. It's on the last slide of the presentation that is in a website. You can write to me directly. And Horacio too. Horacio.